Can I just start with this? Let me just start with this, okay? I had a long, contentious relationship with Donald Trump. You may be aware. And going into 2020, I didn't know whether I could pull the lever for him. I really didn't. The world had shifted under our feet. It had gone crazy with DEI and with the trans ideology nonsense, which was being shoved down my own kids' throats at school. And I, I really wrestled with it. You guys heard me wrestle with it on this program. There's a breast oncology doctor that I go to for my mammogram once a year. She's a far left liberal and I love her. I love her. Every year when I go in, we talk politics. We usually disagree, but we have a shared humanity. And I love that, you know, that we can come in. She's so kind to me. We always hug. She's so good to me. And I love her too. And I went in and I told her after the election who I voted for in 2020. And I've never shared this publicly. I don't talk about who I'd vote for as a journalist. I never have, but I'm going to today. And I told her I voted for Donald Trump. And I almost cried because this woman and I had been through a lot. I'd had a breast cancer scare. Thank God it wasn't anything. She got me through. And she knew what Trump had put me through for that year and how hard it was in my family and so on. I don't want to get back into it. And she said, why? And I told her that it wasn't about me. It was about my concern for this country and my children and what was happening in particular in this culture lane, but in other lanes as well. And I worried what she might say to me. And she said, you know what that tells me? And I said, what? And she said, that you have principles. And I felt so much better. I, you know, I just, it's not that I needed her approval. I just, she's just, you know, we're not even that close. Not that we've ever had dinner together or anything like that. She's just this person who I'd, I talked to for all those years while all that crap was happening. And I voted for Donald Trump to prevent things like this, what happened today. And when I saw the news on what Joe Biden just did to women's rights and Title IX and due process for young men on college campuses and free speech, I was horrified. And my second reaction was, at least I don't have this blood on my hands. I'm ashamed of him. I'm disgusted at you, Miguel Cardona. Shame on you. What's happened today as a result of the change in Title IX is that your daughter, or you, if you are a college-age woman, will now have to go into your college bathroom, your college locker room, and be faced with men posing as women, many of whom are only there because they get off on wearing women's clothing. They literally will have erections because they're wearing a dress into the women's locker room. Your kid's gonna have to look at it and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Nothing. No lawmaker has voted on this. No Congress has passed this. Joe Biden did it with his education secretary. It's an agency regulation. And then your son or you, if you, you are a young college aged man, if you get accused, if he gets accused by a young woman falsely, which happens with all due respect to my fellow women, we've all seen it happen time and time again. It does not mean all women are fake accusers, but enough of them are that we need very sturdy due process regulations to protect the accused. Now, he just lost his right to cross-examination. He cannot confront his accuser anymore because of Joe Biden and what he did today. He's fucked. Sorry, but that's the truth. These are kangaroo courts and his representative will do shuttle diplomacy between the two rooms where he talks to the young man and then he talks to the accuser. And that's the substitute for cross-examination. And we know 
that the representatives who run these courts and are the judges of these kangaroo courts on college campuses and courts is in air quotes, are victims' rights advocates. Your kid gets no protection. That's why Betsy DeVos, when she took over as education secretary after Barack Obama left office uh, with Arne Duncan, tried to restore some semblance of normalcy. Was it because Betsy DeVos hates women? She loves rape? She wanted women to get raped over and over and for their, their assailants to walk free? Hell no. She wanted just a semblance of due process, and that's what she did under Trump. They've reversed it. They've undone most of her solutions to the overreach that Obama and Duncan imposed. And guess what else? It applies to K through 12. It's not just colleges. The way you talk about these issues, pronouns. He's made, waved his magic wand to say we all have to do it the way Joe Biden wants it done. And not even Joe Biden. Who are we kidding? Does anyone think this 89-year-old, whatever he is, he's 82 but seems a lot older. Do we think he's really calling the shots? Do you really think Joe Biden's woke? You really think he cares whether the trans person has access to your naked daughter as she gets ready for swimming? No, that's not what it is. It's his handlers who are the secret president, whoever the hell they are. I don't know who would, I don't know if it's Barack Obama. I don't know if it's Karine Jean-Pierre, if it's Kamala Harris, if it's some woke team behind him, but he does what they tell him. He is the Brazilian bank uncle we showed you yesterday. Those of you who didn't see it, it was a deceased man who got wheeled into a bank by his greedy young niece who tried to pretend he was alive so she could get money. That's him. That's him. He doesn't, he doesn't get a pass, but I also don't believe he cares. He cares about himself. They didn't have the balls to put this before the Congress because they knew what would happen. I'm, I'm, I'm pissed off because let me tell you something. Unlike most people, most news outlets, we here at the Megyn Kelly Show have covered the spate of women who have been attacked in their locker rooms, attacked in their bathrooms. I know the left wants to pretend that it is all loving, genuinely confused men who really want to live as women the way, frankly, I came to know the trans people that I know who don't want to hurt anybody, they're out there. I do not want to disparage all trans people. I know and love some who are not like this. But it would be a disservice to pretend that a large majority of so-called trans women, meaning men posing as women, are not autogynophiles. They are. These are men who get off on dressing as women. They're sexually aroused by it. And those are the one who parades, the ones who parade around places like Planet Fitness, shaving their stubble. An actual trans person wouldn't want you to see his stubble. He would want you to actually believe he's a woman. He's genuinely trying to live his life as one and not making a mockery out of it or a sexual fetish out of it. So now, it's going to continue and not just continue, it's gonna spread. It's gonna spread because now, take it out of the trans lane. Now the men who are genuinely just perverts have a green light to come on in. And if they say no at your kid's campus or K through 12 school, it's now discrimination. It's now unlawful discrimination, a violation of Title IX. The very thing we've been using for decades now to protect girls and young women will now be used against them when they try to speak up against this happening and in favor of their safety. We had an amazing, fun show prepared for you today. We're not going to get to any of it. I don't care. I would vote for RFKJ. I would vote for Trump. But I think Trump is the only answer. RFKJ is kind of weak on this issue, to be perfectly honest with you. But there is no way in hell I will vote for Joe Biden or anyone who supports 
this abomination. It must be undone. Do not comply. The rules don't take effect until August. Don't comply. Don't use their language. Protect your daughters. Fight. Protect your sons. Speak up. Are you passionate about protecting civil liberties like free speech? Well, I've got something special for you. You could consider opening a Donors Trust charitable giving account, a donor advised fund designed specifically with your values in mind. Imagine being able to support causes that you actually care about, all while safeguarding the principles that matter most to you. Whether it's defending free speech, promoting limited government, or supporting individual rights, your contributions can make a difference. It's straightforward giving, so you can focus on what truly matters, making a positive impact. Your donations are securely managed, ensuring your hard-earned money goes exactly where you intend it to. Plus, with built-in safeguards, you can trust that your support is being used effectively and responsibly. So if you're ready to make a difference, go to donorstrust.org slash MK today to download the ultimate survival guide to charitable giving. Learn more at donors, D-O-N-O-R-S, trust.org slash MK. Donorstrust.org slash MK to download the Donors Trust Giving Guide today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.